Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with PrevMed, Heart Attack, Stroke, Cancer, Disability Prevention. Um, today we're talking about natural blood thinners and atrial fibrillation. What do blood thinners have to do with atrial fibrillation in the first place? Well, atrial fibrillation is a major and growing cause of stroke. And stroke is the number one cause of disability in the United States and elsewhere. If you have a stroke, you're wheelchair bound for decades. How is, uh, what, what is atrial fib? It's a chaotic um, electrical pattern in the upper chambers of the heart. Uh, won't get too much deeper into mechanisms. We've got other videos talking about that. But, <clears throat> There are two theories. One theory is that uh, this chaotic mechanism results in formation of clots within the atria, which get thrown up into the brain to cause a clot. The other theory is that it's the comorbidities, the other diseases, like uh, lack of exercise, um, some of the other things that actually cause the stroke itself, aging. Won't get into that either because this video is on natural blood thinners. There are a lot of natural blood thinners out there. Uh, and let me go through the list. A short list is natokinase, turmeric, ginger, garlic, cinnamon and cassia, cayenne peppers, aspirin, um, <clears throat> vitamin, <coughs> excuse me, vitamin E, ginkgo biloba, grape seed extract, apple cider vinegar, cod liver oil, and omega-3s, the fish oils. So tons and tons of natural uh, blood thinners. Yet the medical industry seems um, focused on medications. In fact, very expensive medications. The newer oral anticoagulants are expensive. And um, so uh, the herbalists would say, well, the medical industry is in the pocket of... of um, Big Pharma. There may be some truth to that, but <clears throat> whether that applies for here or not is uh, an issue we'll talk about for a few minutes. But before we do, let's talk about the mechanisms of, and, and definition of, quote, blood thinning. These things don't really thin the blood. What they do is they decrease clotting. Now, there are two mechanisms for decreasing clotting. One is antiplatelet mechanism and the other is the anticoagulant. First platelets uh, form together with a, a net of fibrinogen or fibrin, and then there's a clotting or coagulation mechanism which forms a clot around this network of platelets. Aspirin is the classic antiplatelet. Um, <clears throat> That tends to be related with a longer uh, bleeding time as well, by the way. Now, most of the herbals are antiplatelets, garlic, natokinase, etc. Now, let's talk about the research for a few minutes. I think this is where we start getting into the issue of big pharma and, and uh, other components of this, uh, of this thorny issue. So antiplatelets versus anticoagulants. We've known since before 91 that um, there was some improvement with antiplatelets, but far more improvement with anticoagulants in terms of prevention of stroke um, in a safe way. <clears throat> Just a brief reminder, uh, part of what we do to decrease bleeding can increase another type of stroke hemorrhagic stroke. So you've got ischemic stroke, which is due to a clot, and hemorrhagic stroke. The vast majority of risk uh, increase for stroke is ischemic clot, or ischemic or embolic or clots. So what we're giving is antiplatelets or anticoagulants to decrease that clotting mechanism and decrease the risk of, of embolic stroke. What we found, again, known this for over 20 years, is that the anticoagulant mechanism is more effective and safer 
than the antiplatelet mechanism. Uh, again, both of them helped, but the anticoagulants were, were better. Um, <clears throat> research has continued in this area, and it continues to show that. Um, aspirin and other anticoagulants are no longer recommended by any of the standards groups. Uh, however, about one-third of patients with atrial fib are still on aspirin instead of the anticoagulants. So another that's another failure in the preventive medicine uh, standards or preventive medicine practice. This is the um, an article from uh, I think the SPAF Stroke Prevention and Atrial Atrial Fibrillation. This was the one that was published in Circulation ninety one. Showed a an improvement in prevention of strokes with aspirin, but a far better improvement with the anticoagulants. This is a um, <clears throat> a meta-analysis uh, just this past year in 2016, again showing the um, significant improvement in uh, efficacy and uh, with the anticoagulants. So let's get back to that question about um, is medicine in the pocket or being influenced by big pharma? Well, there is some uh, natural component of this. <clears throat> uh, you don't see Big Pharma doing a lot of research on uh, natural uh, components. Um, and you're not going to see docs recommend unresearched uh, items. Now, <clears throat> I will tell you, and that's one of the uh, things that I do on this channel, I do search and find the, uh, the research that's been done on, on uh, herbal medicines. In many cases, there's enough, and uh, the risk-benefit equation is um, clearly a uh, waste for the fact of use or for a recommendation for using it. For example, with vitamin D, uh, with CoQ10, with uh, omega threes. <clears throat> However, in terms of uh, sc stroke prevention with um, atrial fib, I don't think the research does support it. I think that it's um, the newer oral anticoagulants. And in fact, they're beginning to show uh, improvement in safety and uh, efficacy over, um, over vitamin K. If you look at the vitamin K agonists um, or antagonist Coumadin, the European Standards Agency recommends the NOAX even over uh, Coumadin these days. It's a, the NOAX are a lot easier to use. Um, I'll do some more uh, videos on that issue as we uh, go through this series on uh, atrial fib and stroke prevention. Thank you.